you have to form data, right? So anybody who goes to an AR class, I don't care if it's confined space, I don't care if it's distance shooting, you have to know your, your baseline data, okay? And your baseline data, your zero, is everything you feed off of, off, off your information, okay? So you need to start understanding ranges, okay? I, I remember when I was a young, you know, going through ranger training, we had to study ranges. We had to look at things and interpret range. So if I know my range, I know my what, sir? I know my holds, okay? So in close quarters battle, you know, like I told you, we have our sight to bore ratio, okay? So you need to start developing data along the way. So when I say along the way, is you need to look at your terrain. For my police officers, my civilians, my, my soldiers, right? Look at what did you encounter every single day, okay? So let's just say your mission is to, to make dynamic entry into a home, okay? In whatever country or this, in, in whatever county you're in, okay? So let me put my, myself in this uh, situation is, do you think the houses are different in Africa than in Asia? Okay, so different terrain, different environments, different understandings of your combat environment. So what I'm saying to you is, if you're using an AR as a SWAT guy, and that's your primary, you need to you know the ranges, and you need to get good at certain ranges, and you need to record that data at certain ranges. All right, I, I briefly touched base with it yesterday, but dude, I was trained with heart rate monitors. At one time, I would put a heart rate monitor to me during war. And then through a process of a whole rotation, I would download all that data. And I'm like, yep, this is about average of how, what my heart rate spikes on a mission, okay? During close quarters engagement, this is where I am. Roughly for me, physically fit back then, I was around 160 heart rate. So I'm in a fringe before I start losing what? Sir, what did I lose around 160, 170 heart rate? Dexterity, motor skills. Dexterity, motor skills. Uh, vision, okay? So you need to start understanding all that. You know, the uh, physiological effects of a gunfight at close quarters, okay? If that's your realm, okay? So I'm teaching you today, it's more than just the gun, it's be able to overcome your subconscious. Now, yesterday, I talked about it, did I not? I talked about the subconscious mind, and I say, yeah, don't lose your shit when you get up online. Did the subconscious mind take over? So consciously, you have to be aware of that and then control that adrenaline, draw that ego, draw whatever that's going to interfere with your learning process. We understand. All right, so we're going to start off at close quarters. This is a three-inch dot. So everything I, I'm teaching you today is take my, my lesson, take my curriculum. You know where to find these targets? Okay, so then you, you take my curriculum, you take the training process, you download the, uh, the training aids, and you go out to the range to mimic it, okay? For my police officer, it's very important you understand terrain and distance, okay? All right, so at this range, do we see a sight to bore offset? We know what a sight to bore offset is? We know what a sight to bore offset is? Amber, what's a sight to bore offset? All right, so where are you looking in your scope and where are you actually gonna hit, okay? We call point of aim, point of impact. Okay, point of aim is what you're looking through. Your point of impact, depending on the offset of your gun, right? So you're gonna have to understand your hold. So how do I develop that data? Azers? High deck four, one. Target four, high deck, one. All right, so I'm just gonna go nice and slow. We're nice and slow so you can kind of understand where I'm going. I'm going to go five rounds and watch my holes. So on high deck four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my red dot on one. Understand? Red dot, point of aim, is one. Where's my point of impact? Roughly, I predict two inches, right? I'm looking at the, right? It's two inches below my, uh, my optics. So all right, high deck four, one, on one. All right, so you see my groupings two inches below. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start implementing holes. All right, so we're going to blow out what? That black 
No, we're going to blow out the black center, right? So I want you to know your holes. So now I, I roughly know two inches is roughly my hold. See how I apply that initial data, that initial data, and then I, I start implementing my holes. This is really easy. This is gathering data, gathering data. All right. So let's talk about shooting positions first, okay? Now, do we believe in a low ready or we believe in a high ready? What, what are we going for? Police officers, what are we doing? Depending on the situation, I like that answer. What are what is your department SOP? Already, okay, all right. So I, I like that answer. A lot of um, departments I train, they're they're not that fluid in mind. Okay, that means they crystallize a belief. That means that no, it's low ready all the time. Okay, obviously, where do you think that low ready safety buffer came from? Shoot house, right? Because you got fucking instructors on the catwalk and they don't want to get flagged. Well, what I realized was, you know, during my career, my path, during the war, we cross trained with a lot of different spec ops unit. We had to integrate with a lot of different units um, that we're not used to working with prior to war. So I started seeing some of their SOPs and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So the Navy was really big on uh, high compress uh, carry. I wasn't sold on at first because I was kind of doctrinizing my belief, right? So I was trained on, on low ready. All right, we, we get yelled at on low I really got proficient at the low ready. But I tell you what, man, sometimes you have to just kind of like absorb what is new, absorb what's useful. And what I found useful on a high compress uh, position is because me being a fighter, right, a martial artist, I throw a punch a certain way, okay? So why not mimic that body movement? We hear the weapons extension in your hands, right, all the time. But we don't really train that way, okay? Athletes train that way, right? They, they you know, the, the weapon, the ball, whatever is extension in their hand. Martial arts train that way. But I see a lot of tactician guys, they don't train that way. They, they brief it, but they don't teach it, right? So if you're naturally throwing a punch like this, a jab, why not high compress that gun where I'm looking at the muzzle, okay? I'm not over my eye line, just laying with the pistol. I'm kind of looking at the muzzle. What's that allow me? Point of reference, right? So, sir, can you come out and stand over here? And I'm gonna stand over here. Can you guys, on your drive hand, we know what a drive hand is? All right, on your drive hand, can you put it, point it towards me and look at me? Okay, can you stay, stay looking at me, focus on me, drive your drive hand to him. Don't look at him, please. Bring it back to me. Don't look at him. Can you see him on your peripheral vision? Drive your hand to him without looking. Now look. Are you on him? That's how we drive a fucking gun in a house, okay? We drive a gun into our peripheral vision. We drive the gun into points of unknown with speed. All right, so we have points of domination in a room for civilians. You should identify points of domination in your house, right? What is the maximum, uh, what is the, uh, the firepower you need to sustain, I don't know, a hallway, uh, you know, a, a room, whatever, okay? Start looking at those distances and start studying. Police officers, start walking around your environment as you're serving your warrants and start looking at the terrain a little bit more in detail, all right? With a little bit more detail in your weapon ballistics and everything else. If you are, then good for you, okay? So the high compress works the, uh, the punch. So basically what I do is I punch, like I'm throwing a punch. I punch, and then I seat the, the weapon back into my shoulder pocket. So it looks like this. I punch, and I seat the weapon back in my shoulder pocket. The gun's off safe. Understand? Anytime the gun is off your eye line, the gun goes back on safe, and it comes off the, the eye line. Anytime it's on the eye line, the gun goes on fire. So let's just say if I make dynamic entry into your room 
and I need to clear opposing threats. Does the gun go on fire? Sir? So let's just say we enter a structure, right? And the one guy has to go this way, number one or two. Do I clear with the weapon on safe? Or when I go in, the weapon's on fire? That's right. The weapon's on fire. Anytime your eyes are lined with the weapon, it's on fire. Anytime your weapon breaks off of eye line, that means this is eye line, right? The weapon's on fire. Anytime it drops here, it goes on safe. Anytime it goes up here, it goes on safe. Understand? Listen to me, guys. I had a lot of guys tell me, oh, I run my weapon on fire all the time. I don't believe in safe in the house and this. And that. I, I get you, man. And that was probably your moral. And I thank you for what you did. But I tell you this. You never, if, if you're looking to train to that level of intensity where you're, dude, you're doing rapid reloads around your buddy's face, right? You're moving around each other's extremities around legs. Why not develop that safety on our flat range, right? Yeah. Do you think I run my weapon on fire in the house? Sometimes, depending on the threat, okay? But it's better to develop that state of no mind here where you're not even thinking about it. It's a natural movement. Just like a punch, it's a natural. As soon as I bring it up, it's on fire. I don't even think about it. Some guys tell me, well, in, in adrenaline, when you're, when you're going through and you're, you're facing danger, you'll forget your weapon um, to put on fire. Well, I'll tell you, man, you didn't train hard enough, right? You didn't develop that muscle memory in times of a flat range. You understand? Today is about safety, okay? It's not just safety on a range. We don't want to kill each other, but it's safety and you manipulating that safety is part of the process, presentation. Understand? Okay. Do we understand this drill? All right. Obviously, the six inch, the, the three inch right here is acceptable. But for the whole drills, for the whole drills, I want to be able to hit, I want to be able to hit the black. Understand for your whole drills because I'm not rushing you here. This is not speed here. This is gathering data. We understand this drill. First eight shooters up. Something new today, okay? So if you're used to the low ready, let's try the, the high compress today. All right, let's see what we got. All right, the high compress is this. As I'm, if, if I'm telling you I can talk to you and I can point my finger towards you, I can drive that gun to him, okay? So the high compress will allow me that and it allows me mobility. That's what I need, mobility. Okay, so try, try to work something new today, okay? It's about safety. Weapon safe when it comes off eye line. We understand the drill. First, you're going to center hold on one. You're going to look at your offset. You're going to study your offset. After that, you're going to apply the offsets to all of the other targets, five rounds. Five rounds on one, it should hit around here. Offset, five rounds, five, and all targets. We understand this. At this time, load and make ready. Stand by. Threat. Let it hang. Let it hang. All right, so not bad. Not bad. At this distance, guys, you should not be blowing it out of the three at all, okay? Especially on slow aim fire. You should be able to knock out that black at this distance. You have to slow it down. Slow it down. Trust me. You'll hit speed today, okay? Slow it down. Get, understand your holds, okay? Do we, we understand this exercise? All right, next group up. First targets. A good tight shooting position. Let's talk about stance. Stance was one problem I saw in the first group. All right, let's, let's talk about stance. I want to draw a line in the ground, okay? And I want to put my toes on this side of the line if I'm right-handed shooter. And I want to put my left heel on this side of the line so the line intercepts my toe to my heel. 
All right, I want to be able to cover from my 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Understand? I want to be able to traverse that gun from 3, 12, 9. In one movement, one movement, I want to be able to hit 12, 3, 9. That's going to allow me to cover fire. That allows me to spin and get that avenue, that, that, that cover fire. Understand? So your footwork has a lot to do with this. A lot. We don't lock out our footwork. So when you lock out, what happens? You're going to start getting rocked back. So all I need you to do is just bend your knees. Get out of the mindset of doing this. This is, this is old school shit, right? Get into the more of the mindset as you're standing here, I'm talking to you. And you're just bringing that gun up to your eye line. That's it. Nice and comfortable. No muscle tension. Okay? Load and make ready. Center hold on one. Center hold on one upper deck. Upper deck is what we're shooting. We understand our holds. Okay, we understand our holds. You have to study the holds at this distance. We get it? All right, any questions on, on hold drills at close quarters? So now what we're going to do is, what I usually like to do is I go from three inches. I start studying my three inch holds, okay? And then I start studying my two inch holds. And then I, today we're not going to get there, but then I start hitting one inches, one inch dots at this range. All right, so the two inch, the two inch, so I want you to study, study again. Center hold on one. You should be popping around somewhere around here. And then from there on, you should be knocking out the black. Understand that? Do your, do your magazine changes as needed, five rounds per target. Do we understand this drill? Okay. So back it up. Where were we at earlier? So roughly you're around three yards. Now I'm going to move you back to seven yards. Okay? So for my... For my guys that measure out their lives, right? You gotta walk around and measure out a hallway, right? I remember when I was going through training, uh, counter terrorist training at 21, I would walk around North Carolina Mall and I would look at hands, right? And then I started looking at structures. I started looking at distance. What is the distance in the store, right? What is the distance to my hallway in my house? Can I make that shot? What's the distance down the street? What, what is my normal commute? Can I make those shots? Can I make that shot in the distance? You think I think like that when I'm overseas? You better believe it. I measure out like I was in Africa. I had my turp bring me locals and I would measure them out. The workers that go on base, I measure out their shoulder line, their heads, their pelvis from the torso on up because I need to be able to gauge the distance in order to, to kill you know, my enemy. Okay? So you need to start looking at this data and start implementing this data in. So now we're at seven yards on in. The three things that matter when I'm engaging a target is what, sir? Huh? Size of the target. Distance to the target. The shooter's ability. Okay? Some of you guys can shoot, but you're slow as fuck. All right? So the thing is this. You need to start developing your speed. As long as you don't, don't miss out on accuracy. Start pushing the gun a little bit. All right? So this distance here... What did I just do? I increase the distance, but what I do? I strengthen the target. So your, your shot times should be slower.
Okay? In time, you'll start developing the speed and accuracy at this distance. But if you're blowing it out of the tube, my friend, then you need to slow it down. All right? The standard today is obviously just hit that fucking two-inch block. As long as it rounds into two-inch block, I'm happy. But if you're blowing out the two-inch block, then you need to slow down your rhythm. Okay? Any questions on this drill? What do we do first? Eyes and ears, first line, load and make ready. Seven yard line. Look at, look at his shots over here. You see it? Boom. Boom. That's an extra two step. You gotta relax. Let it relax. Right? You're stiff, you're going to bounce back. Some of you guys, Bob, you're really tense, man. So some of you guys, and it's not just him, all right? If you tighten up your shoulders, man, right? Where's that recoil going? Shoulders, right? So you tighten up everything, it's going to fucking rock you back. That's why on speed shooting, if you're tight, what happens? You're going to rock back, and then you're going to come back. You're going to rock back and come back. You want to let that energy muffle through your body if you want to speed shoot. Okay, you have to let go of everything. It took me a long time to understand that because I want to tighten down on my gun, right? That's what we were taught before the war, tighten down on the gun. But what happens is it starts rocking you back. If you relax your shoulders, man, and get a good tight position, and, and I'm saying if you get forward of that muzzle, right, forward that muzzle, you're going to have more control. What you're happening to you is you rock and you'll come back. Rock and come back. That's... 0.5 of a second on a reset. You understand? So you're almost taking a second for every shot. You want to be able to put five rounds on deck in 1.5 of a second. All right? That's what you want. Now, why five rounds on a six inch ring is the standard today? Why do you think that is? Right, so I could take that six inch ring and I put it in the chest, the face, and the fucking pelvis, okay? And if you think about what I do is I, I go up and down, right, on my gun, okay? So if I put five rounds in the chest, I'm trying to blow out his spine, okay? If I put five rounds in the pelvis, he's dropping. I put five rounds in the face, he's done. In my understanding of war, five rounds was always the answer that put people down for me and my teammates, okay? So I'm giving you that answer. I'm giving you that answer. So today, the, um, the standards is five rounds on a six inch at seven yards in less than 1.5 of a second. You got this. You guys got it. Okay. Any questions on this drill? Why didn't you hold on your first shot? Um, Why did you hold on your first shot, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay.